I've got here the new iPad mini 6th generation, and I've been using it for a few days now, so I'm ready to give you my first impressions. And I've also got the iPad mini 5th generation here for comparison. So I'm going to take a look at the new features of this one and the performance to see whether or not it's a worthwhile upgrade. Now, I've benchmarked the internal storage and also that new A15 Bionic chip so that we can see where this iPad mini sits in the iPad lineup in terms of performance. Let's take a look. Uh, so first impressions of the design are pretty good. It follows the same design language as the iPhone, the iPad Pro and the iPad Air. And I was actually a little worried that it might look a bit chunky because it's basically the same thickness as the iPad Pro. And the relative size difference uh, could have made the proportions look different. But actually, in real life, it works really well. Now, it is slightly thicker than this uh, fifth generation model, but it's also smaller by area. Uh, because we don't have that home button on the front of the device. The bezels around the screen, they're the same as the iPad Pro, but this is one area where the smaller size does make them seem proportionally bigger. And compared to the fifth gen model, the side bezels are actually slightly wider. Now, I don't personally mind this on an iPad because you need space to hold it, uh, but if you're expecting edge to edge like the iPhone, you might be disappointed. The screen itself is perfectly nice. Uh, yes, it's not mini LED or ProMotion like some other iPads, but it is a nice display. Uh, the iPads have always had nice displays. Um, but I do think that iPadOS needs a bit of tweaking for the home screen on this mini. Uh, everything just feels a little bit cramped, and yet there's loads of space around the sides of the screen to spread out the UI a bit more. Uh, hopefully Apple will fix that in a future update. The buttons, they're all top mounted and we get a Touch ID power button now like on the iPad Air. Uh, and this works fine. When you set up the Mini, it prompts you to add a finger from each hand so that you can easily unlock in both portrait and landscape mode. And on a smaller device like the Mini, I think Touch ID is the right solution. In fact, I really wish that the iPhone still had Touch ID. Uh, on a larger screen like the iPad Pro, I personally prefer Face ID, but you'll have your own preference there, I'm sure. Having these volume buttons on the top makes sense to me, as you'll almost certainly rotate the device into landscape mode to watch content. And Apple clearly thinks so too, as this time they've arranged the speakers so that you get stereo uh, when it's in landscape mode. Uh, that makes much more sense, and I have to say that the speakers are anything but mini. Uh, they've got loads of volume, and they're ideally suited to things like watching YouTube. Uh, in fairness, there's not much in the way of bass response, but the clarity is really good. The front-facing camera is now a 12 megapixel ultra-wide version that delivers 1080p resolution with stabilization. And this means that it supports center stage, just like the iPad Pro. Uh, the camera is positioned at the top of the device, so it's going to work best if you're calling in portrait mode. Um, but a lot of people video conference in landscape, and that means that just like the iPad Pro, the camera is then off to one side. So it appears that you're always looking slightly away from the camera. And I'd like to see Apple change this in future, at least on the larger iPads. Uh, probably many people will hold the iPad mini like this for calls, so perhaps the placement makes sense on this device. And we've also got dual microphones here, so the audio experience on conference calls is really good. Now the fifth generation mini added support for Apple Pencil, but we've now got support for the second generation Apple Pencil uh, with the magnetic attachment and charging. And I love that all you have to do is just snap the pencil on and it pairs to the iPad. And that means I can swap my pencil between the Mini and my iPad Pro, so we only have to buy one pencil. Uh, the pencil experience itself is great, and I think the small form factor of the Mini really lends itself to note-taking, especially with the new Quick Note feature in iPadOS 15. I found that I'm using that an awful lot. Artists may notice the difference with this display compared to, say, the 120 hertz ProMotion display on the iPad Pro, but I don't think casual note takers will be aware of the difference. The pencil is very responsive and nice to use. The iPad mini now also has magnetic case attachment like the Air and the Pro. I bought this uh, nice little ESR cover uh, and it just attaches to the iPad mini magnetically. Get it the right way around, there we go. Nice, neat design and uh, a flap here as well to keep uh, your pencil nice and safe and secure when it's uh, 
in your bag. Uh, and that's something that Apple really need to take note of with their Magic Keyboard cover. Finally, we now have a USB-C port. And this opens up more versatility with charging and peripherals. Uh, the fifth generation model has lightning and is, in my experience, quite fussy about the charger that you use. But the new Mini works fine with all the USB-C chargers I've tried it with, and I can't see any difference in charging times. Uh, it does actually come with a charger in the box and a cable. Uh, for me, the biggest benefit of USB-C is being able to quickly get photos off of my SD cards and being able to plug in external storage. And I use this quite a lot with my iPad Pro. Uh, it's probably fair to say that I won't use it very much with the Mini, but it's a nice thing to have. And I tried it out, I popped in an SD card, I loaded up three raw 26 megapixel photos into Affinity Photo, and I did an HDR merge. The iPad Mini coped fine with that, so I pulled in some more raw files, I did some editing, and again, the experience was really good. Uh, this Mini certainly has got some performance in it, Inside the iPad Mini 6, we've got the same A15 Bionic chip that is in the new iPhone 13. Or do we? Well, it is technically the same chip, but it's running at a lower clock speed, uh, 3 gigahertz as opposed to 3.2 gigahertz. And there's no technical reason for Apple to do this. It's not like it's going to overheat in the iPad Mini compared to an iPhone. So I expect this is either a marketing decision or perhaps a case of chip binning, where the best chips go to the iPhone, and those that can't reliably run at the faster clock speed head to the iPad mini. I did the obligatory Geekbench 5 test, and I got a score of 1,597 for single core, and 4,095 for multi-core. And that is massively impressive for a, a tiny tablet costing 480 pounds. Now you'd be happy with that sort of performance in a laptop that cost twice as much as this. Uh, but let's compare it to other iPad models. Uh, this score places the Mini for single core performance actually ahead of the previous generation iPad Pro models that were based on the A12 chip. And it's not that far behind those same iPad Pros for multi-core performance. But what I find most interesting is that these scores are almost identical to the A14 Bionic that's in the iPad Air. That's got the same number of cores, six, running at the same clock speed, and it has an almost identical amount of RAM. Uh, so there's probably a more in-depth conversation to be had about that in a future video. Where the big gains have happened is with graphics performance. Uh, the A15 Bionic in the Mini has five GPU cores, which gives it a Geekbench 5 Metal score of 13,716. And that's 46% more performance than the iPhone 12 that has the A14 Bionic. And it's more than two and a half times faster than the fifth generation iPad Mini. It's even outperforming those A12-based iPad Pro models, and it's 9% faster than the iPad Air. And this really helps us to position the iPad Mini in the lineup. It's basically a smaller version of the iPad Air. Higher up the range, you've got the M1-equipped iPad Pros, which obviously have a lot more performance. And then at the entry level, we've got the standard iPad, which now has the A13 Bionic, like the fifth gen iPad Mini. And frankly, that is a stunning value iPad. Now let's just take a quick look at internal storage speed. I ran a Jazz Disk Bench test and I got a read speed of 491 megabytes per second and a write speed of 595 megabytes per second. So it's not the fastest SSD in the world by any stretch, but it's more than enough performance for an iPad. Now compare that to the fifth generation Mini, which scored 396 on read and 171 on write, and you can see that's a huge performance increase. Now, of course, benchmarks don't always translate to real-world performance, especially when it comes to iPads. It doesn't really matter which iPad you buy, you are going to get a consistently good experience. And that's thanks to Apple's tight optimization between hardware and software. It's only really if you're planning to do more involved things like photo editing or perhaps video editing that you'll really see the benefits of the additional performance on offer. So, is the iPad mini 6th generation a worthwhile upgrade over the 5th generation mini? I'd say definitely. It's better in pretty much every way, although it doesn't have a headphone jack like the 5th gen does. Uh, I think it also clarifies the iPad lineup. We've got the Pro models with a choice of large and small, and then we've got the Air and the Mini, again offering broadly the same performance with the choice of large and small. And with five models to choose from in the iPad lineup, there's something for everyone, and a wide variety of budgets are covered. 
Uh, if you personally like the smaller form factor, I think you'll enjoy the new Mini. Uh, Apple has really done a good job on this one. So is the iPad Mini 6 on your shopping list, or perhaps you've already picked one up? And if so, what do you think of it? Uh, please let me know in the comments below. And thanks for all of your subs, your shares, and your likes. It really helps the channel. It means that I can keep making content. And so I'll see you next time for some more geekery.